Hello, everyone. My name is Jian Feng Li. I'm from Fudan University, Shanghai, China. It's my great pleasure to share my work here with you. I'm very sorry that I cannot attend this wonderful meeting personally because of the visa issue. However, I don't blame Donald Trump because it is not all his fault. Luckily, I can videotape my talk and upload it on the YouTube. So you can find this talk on YouTube by typing possible solutions to hard problem and combination problem. I will firstly try to convince the community that there are two main obstacles standing on the way to the science of consciousness. Then I will discuss these two obstacles and the possible ways to remove them separately. In particular, I will present a very interesting computer simulation about toy consciousness. Actually, in the past two decades, many geniuses are trying to help the study of consciousness to achieve the transition from philosophy to science. Even though many significant progresses have been made, this transition is far from being accomplished, in my opinion. There are still two main obstacles on the way from philosophy to science. The first obstacle reflects the tension between hard problem and limitation of physics. The hard problem of consciousness is generally referred to the problem related with our daily conscious experience. David Chambers argued that our conscious experience is more than just relations and structures. On the other hand, physics seems to be only capable of dealing with relations and structures. Obviously, this tension will prevent us from using the theoretical tools of physics to study consciousness, and this is very bad. Even if one knows how to formulate the unstructural conscious experience or knows how to solve the hard problem in theory, there is still another devil on the way. This is actually a problem of panpsychism. For panpsychism, all matters are conscious because they all have phenomenal properties. The problem is that for simple matters, their phenomenal properties are way too simple to form the macroscopic phenomenal properties that we have. So simple matters are effectively not conscious. So how to combine these microscopic phenomenal properties to form the macro one that are conscious is really a very challenging problem for all of us. To my best knowledge, no one knows how to solve this problem today. Therefore, any sensible theory of consciousness should explicitly tell us how to remove these two obstacles. As to the first obstacle and hard problem, I believe most people in the community should be very familiar with it. So let's just skip to However, I have to define what do you mean by solving the hard problem in the first place. Actually, it's a problem that has been overlooked. However, this problem should be answered firstly before really trying to solve the hard problem. Otherwise, it is almost impossible to make any progress about solving the hard problem. Therefore, if you don't agree with me about my answer to this question, then you don't need to look at my solution to the hard problem anymore. Then what do you mean by solving the hard problem? I think you just need to tell us how to describe the unstructural conscious experience in theory or how to formulate conscious experiences. It seems that it is easy to achieve this goal, but it doesn't. I am inspired by Wittgenstein's philosophy. Where of one cannot speak, there of one must be silent. But I would say, silence does not mean doing nothing. One can map where of one cannot speak to some entity, also contains elements one cannot speak. Which means one is encouraged to find the objects in physics that contain unstructural or unphysical elements. Do we have such objects in physics? 
Yes, we have. Recall that professors from physical department will tell you, quantum states themselves have no physical meaning, but the transition probability or density matrix have physical meaning. For physicists, transition probability is precious, but for us, the unphysical objects, the quantum states themselves, are precious. So, my general idea is to map conscious experiences to quantum states because they are all unstructural. This is only a very rough idea of my solution. In detail, I will first present two axioms. The first axiom regards the definition of properties. The physical properties are assumed to be relations between systems, while phenomenal properties are ontological pairings between systems. The second axiom regards conscious experience. Any fraction of conscious experience tries to gain as much information as possible. And this is Maximum Information Principle, MIP. The first axiom implies that if a system contains everything, then it has no properties. If it has some properties, there must be some relations or pairings between this system and other systems. But there is no other system because it has already contains everything. The schematic framework of solving the heart problem is summarized in this loop, consistent loop of consciousness. We start with a set of transcendental conscious experiences. This transcendental conscious could be seen as average experiences of, of all humankind. Then as suggested by the gener general idea of Bob mentioned, one can map these experiences to a set of quantum state DK. By putting together these quantum states, one can obtain a quantum state D. We call this state a wholeness. It contains everything. But the first axiom implies that this wholeness has no properties. There is no space, no time, even anything, no anything in D. If you want to study it, you have to decompose it. For example, you can decompose it into two systems, M and W, and study the relations between them. If M satisfies some condition, it can be seen as a consciousness. If you focus on time span delta t, it is possible to define a quantum state that can be defined as conscious experience in the next step. But we first look at the subsystem W prime here. It is actually our universe in time t. It can be studied by further decomposing it into small systems. Relations among these systems define the physics in our universe W prime. Approximately a system E and W form the conscious experience at time t. Obviously consciousness M can have a series of experience as it is passed in this way. Also different ways of decomposing D will lead to different consciousness. If you put this set of conscious experiences together, we can obtain the so-called all possible, all possible conscious experiences. Finally, it is required that this poss all possible conscious experience to be one-to-one -one mapping to the transcendental dental experience bar P. One can adjust the face angles to achieve this mapping. It is actually this angle here. We emphasize that this consistent loop of consciousness is very well defined in physics. Actually, it can even be computable. Here, I present a simple computer simulation of a toy consciousness M. We first randomly generate 5,300 complex coefficients to generate a wholeness the wholeness D. Then we decompose D into M and W with the dimensions 53 and 100 respectively. The wholeness D can be expressed in this way 
all in this way, way of 53 common states are summing up together to D. Naively, you may think each state should correspond to a conscious experience flash, but it doesn't because in each such experience or state, M cannot have information about W. Since the quantum entropy between M and W is zero in such state, which obviously contradicts with our daily experience. Our experience does have some information, so it has to overlap more and more states to form a state contains some information, but when to stop? A common choice is to let as has as much information as possible. This is actually the maximum information principle, so called MIP. Normally, if we all, all these 53 states for the entropy to reach its maximum. But if this happens, it will be a disaster. Because now M has only one single experience, and it is not a real consciousness, since it cannot even feel the time flowing. But sometimes, for example here, it overlaps 32 states to reach the maximum entropy here. So the length of the fourth experience is 33, 32, 32 here. And consciousness M can use the left states to generate more 14 experiences. So the life span of this consciousness is 15. Actually, the lifespan of the consciousness depends on the way of decomposing D. Only when the, when the quantum entropy between M and W is not very small or not very big, it can have a relatively long life. In the second part of my talk, I would like to show how to solve the combination problem. Because I don't have much time now, so I suggest you to read Chandler's review article about combination problem. Here, precise that the combination problem is actually the problem of panpsychism. That is how to combine the, these macro micro phenomenal properties to form the macro ones that are conscious. Actually, many people hypothesis that combination of physical properties will automatically make the phenomenal properties to form a macro phenomenal property. And validity of many theories of consciousness depends on this hypothesis. But there are problems. First, how to ensure the consistency between physical properties and phenomenal properties. For example, when the physical properties are doing arithmetic 1 plus 1 equal 2, is the hardware also doing 1 plus 1 equal 2 in its mind? Second, are these phenomenal properties combinable? Uh, for example, what do you mean by combine for phenomenal properties in the first place? Actually, uh, for William James, phenomenal properties, properties cannot combine. And I agree with you. You might wonder, in the first place, why physical properties can be combined? After a very, very careful looking into the definition of combination, we will find that to combine means to classify in the end. But to classify, some cr criterion defined by the observer is needed, so there is no objective combination. But for uh, consciousness, any external criterion is meaningless for a conscious entity. That is the real reason why phenomenal properties cannot be combined. I can give another argument but I don't want to talk about it today. So, so, now we have troubles because the conscious entity must be inseparable during his whole life, which means it might be an 
elementary particle with a huge inner freedom. Maybe it is a dark matter. Therefore, if William James were right, nature must find some way to stabilize this particle in our brain. We are left with only a very, very narrow road to the science of consciousness. Many people found this almost a mission impossible, so they discarded at the first glance. Here, I have a bold suggestion that nature has employed a temporary identical particle principle to s stabilize this dark matter. If exchange of two systems will not cause any observable phenomena, then these two systems should be seen as identical. Here, I generalize this concept a little bit. If exchange of these two systems will not cause any observable phenomena during a time span delta t, then these two systems should be also seen as identical. I call this identical as temporary identical. For example, this dark matter with a uh, uh, freedom of capital P uh, and a composite particle system with a freedom P to the nc power can be possibly temporarily identical if their inner freedom are close to each other if uh, here uh, small m is small. If they are temporarily identical, then we can exchange them. So the particles in the balls might be replaced by the dark matter. Actually, the dark matter can be stabilized by two or more than two such bosses. Here, we prepare two such bosses. One is filled with the NC particle. Another with is filled with the NC minus one particles. Then, at t equal to zero, dark matter will be captured by the air boss. If one more particle is added into B box at the same time, then B box and the dark matter particle will be temporarily identical. They, they will exchange with each other and then the dark matter will goes to, go to B box while B box particles will go to A box. By this way, the dark matter can be possibly stabilized among these two these two boxes. We can easily generalize this method to our brain. Nature actually uses about ten to the ten power such systems to stabilize some dark matter particle in our brain and uses the, the phenomenal properties of the dark matter particle to produce the conscious experience. I think I don't have time to explain these details. So please just take photos of the left three slides. Here it is the interaction between the dark matter particle and synaptic particle. And here is about how to make conscious machine. You can also check whether these two six laws proposed by me make sense or not. And finally, thank you all.